and welcome to the Pickle Jar. My name is Josh and in today's video I'm going to be painting up a Necron Immortal. Pickle Jar! Pickle Jar! Miniatures! Excellent! Hi guys and welcome back to another Let's Paint episode here on the Pickle Jar. This week I'm painting a Necron Immortal. Now I used to collect Necrons way back when and they were my main army for the longest time and then towards the end of 6th edition me and my group of friends stopped playing 40k um, and we didn't play at all during 7th edition to the point where I sold all my old Necron uh, army um, still very upset about that but I sold it because I wasn't using it I thought someone else might get some use out of it and then a few weeks later, my friends all decided, yep, we're going to start playing 40k again. And that was that. So it was still too too soon after selling my Necron, so I decided to go with Dark Eldar. And I've stuck with them since, and I've, I've painted various other bits and pieces. But with the imminent release of 9th edition and the new Necron things that are coming out with it, I decided that it is finally time to dip my toe back into the lovely lovely Necron models and uh, get some painting done. I received a lovely care package courtesy of Elston from the Chilling Wargamers channel. Uh, received that last week and in amongst all the lovely bits and pieces in there was a box of Necron Immortals so I figured what better way to get me back into painting these tiny little robots than by painting one of these guys up and I thought that I'd film it and do a full Let's Paint episode on it. So my Necrons used to be uh, in very bright colour schemes. Um, I originally painted my Necrons purple with green uh, like fuel rod uh, bits, the gauze bits. And then I repainted them at a later date and they were a sort of light and dark blue with orange gauze instead of green. Um, and this is how I, very much how I used to paint things, very much my own style. And I've carried on doing that, but with these Necrons coming out now, and with the stuff that's been released and leaked for 9th edition, the artwork and, and the stuff like that, I really quite like the new paint scheme that they're going with. Rather than the old Necrons that were just silver, and then occasionally you get some like green and stuff on them, I like the new ones that are the sort of like... Uh, worn bronze sort of look um, so that's what I've decided to go with and then your very traditional green for the gauze area so I figured I'd give that a go and uh, hopefully you enjoy watching the video of me painting this guy up. Before we get started with the Let's Paint episode just want to say that if you are enjoying the content that we're putting out here on the Pickle Jar be sure to leave a like and a comment down below letting me know what you think of this video and if you are new please consider subscribing so you can keep up to date with all the content that we release in the future. With that out of the way here we go with the Let's Pim. So here he is, the lovely Necron Immortal, all built and primed and ready to paint up in the new paint scheme. Um, I've been looking forward to painting this guy for a while, so I'm starting off by putting a heavy dry brush of Lead Belcher all over the model. Now I'm dry brushing over the top of a black base coat rather than just spraying it silver for the simple reason that if I do this some of the black base coat will remain in the shadowed areas and provide some shadows. And then it also means I don't have to work over some areas like the gun which I didn't want to be metallic and um, so it's easy just doing it this way. I then gave a very light dry brush to the centre of each panel with Balthazar Gold. Um, using this in a very very light dry brush gives the effect of sort of faded sort of bronze coppery sort of look because it's going on over the top of silver it sort of fades that even more and uh, this is a really really easy way to get this look uh, which is very very similar to the new uh, dynasty that they announced with the Silent King. Once that was all on I then took some watered down Abaddon Black and just went into all the joints, all the different bits like the elbows, the knees, the, down the spinal column, all that sort of stuff and just added that as a wash just to darken some of the recessed areas down and add a bit more definition between each panel. Once that was all on and dry, I then took a little bit of Adrax Earthshade and very, very, very steadily added a little bit at a time 
just added some to the center of each panel just to darken the bronze look down a little bit in the middle but not too much now you don't want to go too over the top with this it does just need to be a small amount but it helps add some extra definition and variation in the color Now that the necker himself was all painted, it's time to start working on the gauze blaster. Um, my old ones had orange gauze, I'm going back to a traditional green for this guy. So I put a base coat down on the rods of Ulthwan Grey. Now this is just to help the green that I'm going to be putting over the top keep its vibrancy um, as it's easier to go over the top of a white or a grey than it is to go over the top of black. Um, it helps keep the colour nice and bright which is exactly what I'm to do. I want to try and get a very bright neon glowy sort of look in the middle sections. Once that was on I then put some uh, moot green down all over the rods, covered that nicely um, and that went on nice and bright because of the previous layer that I'd put on. Then started to add in some darker green on the sort of top and underneath sections, leaving the, the sort of recessed areas where the glow was going to be. So the dark green that I'm using for this was Warpstone Glow, and I'm just watering it down and just sort of shading this on, uh, almost glazing really, uh, just adding it in so that the transition is still there and it will give the effect of glowing once I add the next section in, which is what I'm doing here which is I've taken some flash kits yellow, watered this down and then added this into the recessed areas in the middle, going over the top of the moot green and this creates the nice glowing effect that's really really bright in these recessed areas and then it sort of fades as it goes out all the way out to the darker green areas on the top and the bottom. I wasn't quite happy with how dark the uh, those furthest away areas on the gauze rods was so I added some incubi darkness and once again just watered it down and glazed that over the top. I then carried on painting all the different energy parts, so the sort of coils on the main part of the gun, and then the cables that are going all around. There's a couple on the front, and then there's a one on the back later on. All I'm doing for these is painting the warpstone glow on as a base coat, and then using a mixture of this and moot green and flash kits yellow to sort of build up um, the glowing sort of effect to the nice bright green that I wanted to have for the gauze on this and all. Doing stuff like this, it's really, really easy, but it, it's one of those things that takes a little bit of practice, um, but then once you get it, you've sort of, you've got it. Um, and it is just a case of watering stuff down and adding thin layers, gradually building colors up um, and being patient with it. Um, how I used to do stuff like this, I used to just paint a solid colour and then paint a strip of white down the middle to give the glowing impression, which looking back now uh, is a bit naff and isn't the look that I want to go for and being able to do it like this, it, it really helps the models sort of pop and come alive. So what you see I'm doing here is adding more of the uh, lighter colour and then a yellow wash over the top of that second cable on the front. Um, just get nice and bright and then all I'll do is come in afterwards with uh, ink by darkness Watered down and just add that into the sort of the joining of the two cables just to separate the two And that's what I'm doing just here The cable on the back I wanted this to have a nice transition going from the darkest green where his spine is All the way up to the nice bright green where it joins up with the gun as if the energy is flowing and building as it's going through so I just once again took the Watson Glow, painted the entire cable and then watered down moot green and started uh, putting this on as a glaze, painting towards the gun each time, getting brighter and brighter, adding some flash kits yellowing and brighter and brighter and that's again an easy way to get a nice transition, loads and loads of nice thin down layers very gradually and always paint towards the point you want to be the brightest. Um, because then that's where your paintbrush, your paint brush stroke will finish, and that's where your paint will be the strongest. I finished off a couple of the last little bits, like the white stripe on his head and his glowing eyes, put him on a nice decorated base, and here he is all finished. One absolutely terrifying looking Necron Immortal. So there you go guys, that was how I painted this Necron Immortal from the very start all the way to the very end. I hope you've enjoyed watching me go through this process and work a couple of the little things 
out. Uh, my particular favourite parts were the fuel rods on the gun. They were a lot of fun to work on and to sort of tweak and get looking really nice and bright and vibrant and I'm really really happy with how the model in itself has turned out. Just also want to say thanks once again to Mr Elston from the Chilling Wargamers channel for sending me the care package um, as the stuff that I was using on the base, the, um, the foliage, that was in the care package and it's something that I've wanted to use for a while and just never got around to getting so thank you very very much for sending that over to me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. And if you're new to the pickle jar, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. If you want to get in touch with us, you can reach us on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages. The links for all of which are down below in the description, as are the links for the Chilling Wargamers YouTube channel and Discord. The Pickle Jar are a very, very, very proud member of the Chilling Wargamers network and I am a proud member of the Chilling Wargamers YouTube channel itself. So if you want to get involved with us over on their channel, be sure to follow the link down below, leave them a comment and tune in for one of our live shows every Thursday at 8pm. Speaking of live shows, don't forget that you can see us here on the Pickle Jar every Wednesday at 8pm where we will be painting through something that you guys pick from a poll posted on our Facebook page every Monday or Tuesday. If you'd like to help support the Pickle Jar, we do have our very own merch store, the link for which is down below in the description as well. You can purchase t-shirts, you can purchase stickers, hoodies, cushions, whatever you fancy, and anything that we make from it goes straight back into the channel to help us improve the content that we put out for you guys. That's all from me, I'll see you next week with another video.